Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss the problem B from the latest educational code forces round 99 and the problem name is jumps. This problem is a little bit tricky and you have to like draw it out. I also struggle a lot drawing this problem out and trying to solve it out. But uh, after 2-3 attempts, I find out a little bit way and then after like 4-5 attempts, I find out the way. So it's difficult for me also, but I'll tell you how to solve this problem out. So uh, the problem statement states that you are standing on an OR O X axis which means that there's an X axis and uh, the problem states that your starting point is zero now what you have to do you have to make several jumps to reach some point Y okay so like you are in some like some point which is zero and then you have to reach some point okay then for that reaching that point you can do some jumps but the jumps has some property uh, either you can do a like whenever you're doing a kth jump, like say, let's assume that you are doing the first jump, second jump, third jump. So for whenever you are doing a kth jump, which is like the fourth jump, fifth jump, you have to do a jump of that size, which is K. So if you're doing a jump of fifth jump, so you have to do a jump of size five. If you're doing a sixth jump, then the jump to the next number will be of size six. I'll tell you more with example or with a drawing. And you have two options, whether you can either jump in the positive direction by y plus k like you can like jump to some other position y plus k or you can either go one step back so you actually you want to move to an integer x sorry you have to move to an integer x and at every current position y you can either do these two things you can either like jump k or you can go one step back so one minimum jumps to reach the position x and that's the whole problem so let's like try it out for five case like test cases as you can see in this example also they are from one till five so i'll do with this example also so what you can easily see is if i want to jump one i can do a jump of one in the first turn only now in the because it's a first turn now in the second turn i will do a jump of size two in the third turn i will do a jump of size three like this this is the question so this is like if this is two this will be three this will be four five and six but this is also not possible i just have to jump i can also move one step back like this so it can also be like this i can f first move one step back so now because the first turn is over i have to jump two in this step because now it's a second turn so this is minus one so now if i do two step jump it will come to one and now i i will do a three step jump so three it will become to four. So as you can see that I'm doing these types of jumps in which my kth jump should be of the size k. Okay. Now if you want to reach four light, let's zoom. Now you can either go like this. You can do a jump one, two, and then three, and then come some steps back. But that's not optimal to come some steps back. So because uh, you can only come step back at every new like new operation but what you can either do like this you can just do one step back minus one and then do two steps jump and you can reach four so this is more optimal i hope you get the intuition we can just do one step back and then a uh, set two like two position jump and the three position jump so this is optimal is if i in this we just do it in three steps as in this i can do this one two three and then four and five so it's five so answer is this only which is better so uh, how we are finding out this value i'll tell you how so as you can see in this if i see this if i am below four so let's assume i want to find out the value for four for four only if i'm below four it's like we have to do some more jumps if i overshoot four if i come to six I can easily find out that okay the difference between the current position which are more than four because let's assume I want to reach four and now I am on position six so there's a difference of two and as you can see my jumps are like this I'm doing a jump one two three and so on okay now what you can easily do in this problem is I can make any so like let's assume that i don't want to do this jump i don't want to do a jump of size two or i don't want to do a jump of size one so
So what is beneficial? If I don't want to do a jump up size one, I can just go one step back. So if I do go one step back, so the sum of this is because initially if I just do one step, two step and three step, it will become equal to six. But if I do this, I don't do this one step forward, but I do one step backward. So it will be like this minus one, two and three. If you don't understand this, it's just mean that which I've told you, if I start at point zero, I can go one step back and then two steps forward and then three steps forward. So that's what I'm doing. So that's the sum of that. I found this on the web. So uh, this is the total distance I will reach, which is equal to, as you can see, four. So if I just flip one, just like I can either make this one, so it will become four. So why does this become four? Because see, I have to first delete this number whole out and also do a minus one. So as you can see, this is one here. So one and then like minus of minus one. So it's become two. So as you can see that my total sum decreased by two if I just flip out this number and replace it with minus one. Okay. If I change this number, then what will happen that two minus of minus one, because I will not do this step. What I mean by this is if I start with zero, I will do one step forward and then I don't do second step forward. I will do the second step with minus one. So I will come to this position again. And then I will do the next step of kth step of size three to the forward direction like this. This, this is what I mean, mean by this. So what I mean by this is I will flip this bit out or like I have not bit this position out. So if I flip this position out, it will become like this one minus two plus three. If I do like this, the so total sum will become equal to three. And as you can see, the total sum will become equal to three. So it means that, that my sum is decreasing by value one. If I just flip this out, if I don't do this jump, I can somehow decrease my total jumps, the total distance I will reach. As you can see, if I, I can reach this total dis difference in, I can reach it in three steps only. But if I just flip this, which means that I will do one jump in the forward direction, two jumps in the backward and one jump in the forward direction or three jumps in the forward direction, uh, gap of three, it will reach me through six or like two, four, and then I can reach to three. So I just have to flip the, the sign of any one of these positions and then I can reach that position. I hope you get the point how we are doing this. But as you can see, if I flip the first position sign, then I will decrease my total by two. If I flip the second position sign, I will decrease my total by three and, and by four and so on. But what you can simply observe in this problem is I can either reach to my final position. Let's assume that I want to reach six. So I can just do some positive jumps like this and I will reach six. If I want to reach four, then I can see that the difference between the current position I will, I am on the current total, which is six and the, the position I want to reach is four, which is like two minus. So which means that because it's two minus, I can somehow flip the signs of any of these values to make this equal to four and how you can, I just flip out the value of this and I, I can easily get four. If I want to reach some other number, which such that the difference between them is three the difference between the final reach, final position and the difference between them is three. So I can just flip out the second position and I can reach three. And if the total sum is equal to six only, then I don't have to go some somewhere back. So I hope you get that just that if I want to go two step backs, I just flip out one position, like one number and I can get to that position. If I just flip out some other number, I can get to that position. And thus I can get to any position in doing just this number of steps, but there's a catch. I cannot like decrease my steps by one, which means that I cannot, if I want to reach five here in this position, let's assume if I want to reach five, how can I reach five? I, if I can only decrease my position by two, three, four, but not by one. I hope you get my point. As you can see in this, if I flip the position or the sign of this number, my total sum will decrease by two. If I flip some another number, it will become decreased by two, like two, three, four. But if I want to decrease it by one, how I can do? That's it, not possible. So what is beneficial in that case is do one more jump ahead, do one more jump ahead. And now the difference between the final position and the current position will be in the range, which is not one. And now you can do this some another 
number flipping and now you can reach that because every other position you can reach by flipping any number but not one so it's better to just do one more step ahead and now such that the difference will increase and it will increase and come to in this range and then i can do the following thing so the answer is if the difference what i will reach the position i will reach is x if that x minus one if like the difference between the final position i want to reach and the number which is just ahead of it because if i am just doing jumps like this one two three i'm just finding out the maximum total jump which i want to which just overshoot my final value if i want to reach five i want to find out the maximum sum which is just greater than the total value i want to reach such that i from that position i can just backtrack some like position and i can reach that position i hope you get the gist of this problem like you can draw out some test cases also in simple terms if i just recapitulate what i have done the thing is i want to start from zero and i will do one jump two jump three jump till that i just overshoot the value which i want to reach and from that value i will check that from that value whether the value i want to reach is just one place back two place back three place back and so on if it's more than two place back then i can just flip out some signs and i can reach that so the answer is just that total number of steps have taken till now but if it's one step back then i have to do one more step to go more ahead and then i can come back to that position because i cannot do a jump of one back that's the whole because flipping out any sign will not decrease my total sum by one and that's the whole logic i can decrease my sum to zero because i can reach to that particular value i can decrease my sum by two three and four and so on but i cannot decrease my sum by one and thus i will do an additional jump and then come to back to come back to that position i hope you get the information what i am telling you so that's the like logic for this problem i will iterate from 1 till n and then i'm just doing like i into i plus n divided by 2 so i'm just finding out the the next greatest number greater than equal to because i want to increase or make this total sum from 1 till n greater than 2n okay this is number and if it becomes greater than i will find out a total sum till that position which means that the total sum so let's assume that i want to reach 5 so i will find out a total sum from 1 till 6 which is like this i will store out this and from this position i will find out whether from this position the difference between this position is like the difference between this position this position is greater than greater than 1 then i can reach it in always these number of steps or else if it's greater than not greater than if it's become equal to 1 difference between them is equal to 1 then the answer is that Uh, I have to do one more step ahead. So the number of steps I have taken uh, is stored in this i, and I, that's what I'm doing. If uh, like the difference between them k minus i n is equal to one, or you can say that k is equal to n plus one if you just take out this n on the left side because k is greater than the total sum, the total sum which is just overshoot of n. So k minus n if it's equal to one, then the answer is i plus one. Else the answer is one i. I hope you get the like the code and the examples and the logic itself if you still have any doubts you can ping me on my telegram channel or you can put down in the description what what like whatever doubts you have so i'll see you in the next one keep coding bye